Hello and welcome to the Coder C channel. This time I will teach you how to implement statically typed type safe Kotlin builders, which we will later use to implement our own DSL. Additionally, we will discuss what exactly DSLs are, their benefits, and why Kotlin is a good choice for creating them. So to sum up, I can assure you that this video is everything you need to know in order to start implementing your own Kotlin DSLs. Before we start, I just wanted to invite you to my blog at coderc.com, where you can find much more Kotlin and backend knowledge, and to my free weekly newsletter so that you will never miss any important updates from the Kotlin world, and additionally, you will get three ebooks when joining. With all of that said, let's figure out what exactly is a DSL. Well, a DSL is an acronym for Domain Specific Language. It is nothing else than a specialized language designed to solve problems or tasks within a specific domain. Unlike general purpose languages like Kotlin, for example, which are designed for a wide range of applications, DSLs focus on easy to understand syntax tailored to a particular problem domain. Great examples can be HTML for creating web pages, Gradle for building automation, or SQL for querying databases. But what is the purpose and benefits of DSLs? Well, the main purpose of DSLs is to help programmers to deal with complex, hierarchical data structures in an easy way. So, a well-designed domain-specific language provides, of course, among others, the following benefits. Firstly, expressiveness that helps us to express complex ideas and logic using a more concise and natural syntax. Nextly, readability. The code we produce is simply easier to read and understand. Additionally, maintainability. A modular and organized code structure makes it easier to maintain and extend our programs. Okay, so is Kotlin a good choice for DSLs? Short answer, yes. Kotlin is designed to be a concise, readable, and expressive programming language. When we combine together properly named functions and function literals with Receiver, we can implement truly type-safe Kotlin builders. Additionally, Lambda expressions, scoping literals, extension or infix functions help us to organize everything in an even cleaner way. If you are looking for real-life usage examples, then we can find type-safe builders, for example, when configuring roads in Kator or in Gradle's Kotlin DSL. With all of that being said, let's start the practice part by explaining the concept of function literals with Receiver. In simple words, it is nothing else than a combination of lambda expression and extension function. Let's take a look at the following example and let's start by implementing our lambda expression. I will call it hello val. Hello. Firstly, we need to specify the argument type. Let's make it string and the return type of our lambda expression, which will keep a string too. So the purpose of our lambda will be to simply return a string value with hello text. So equals. Right now I'll specify the type of the argument. Hello, and let's inject the name. Control Alt L. Let's format the code. And following, let's implement our main function. So hit enter, fun, main. Let's open up brackets and let's introduce a new variable called greeting. Well, greeting equals, and now let's invoke our lambda expression. Let's forward our Piotr value. So we can see that we can invoke our lambda expression just like a simple function. Lastly, let's print out our greeting variable to the output. So print open up greeting, control alt L. And right here, we can click on our green icon and run our main function. We can see it worked and printed out hello Piotr to the output. Excellent. As the next step, let's introduce the extension function. It will be called hello as well, and it will be able to be invoked on the string object. So let's click on the second line. Let's start with fun keyword, string, hello, and optionally, we can specify the return type. Now I would like this one to return hello name too. So hello, and this time I would like to invoke this. So nextly, let's update the greeting. So this time I would like it to be invoked or Piotr, and hello, control alt L, 
Shift plus F10, this is the shortcut for rerun. Again, we can see that everything is working fine and the exact same output was printed out. So as I mentioned in the beginning, function literals with receiver are kind of hybrid of these two. So let's implement it. Let's firstly delete everything here. I'll get rid of these two. And let's start with val hello string and the return type will be string2 equals and now hello and refer as this control alt l let's invoke it once again so val greeting equals piotr dot hello let's print out to the output in a moment i'll describe what happened here we can click on this or again shift plus f10 excellent we can see that this is working fine so what's going on here so in our example the string object for which we invoke the function is a receiver and it implicitly becomes this inside the function this way we can access all its members like public fields inside our function even without this keyword. So right here we have a string value, but it, it was more complex object. We would be able to refer simply to its field, public fields and functions inside our function here. Okay, but how does it relate to creating DSLs in Kotlin? Well, we can pass function literals with receiver as arguments to high order functions. Functions that take other functions as parameters. I know a mambo jumbo, but everything will become clear by the end of this tutorial. With that done, let's introduce a class called board, which we'll use later to uh, work with our DSL and enum class board color. So let me clear this up. Let's get rid of this one too. And let's start everything by introducing board color. Enum class board color. This one will simply contain a few colors like black, white, green, and blue for example. Nestle let's introduce board class with two var fields. Class, board, and this one will contain the title of string type with default empty string and the color which will be blue by default. So var title of type string and by default let's make it empty string. Next we var color of type board color which by default will be blue. To make it work, let's instantiate it. So val board equals new board. And for example, for title, title, I'll set up title one. And for color, I will set up white. Control Alt L. Excellent. At this point, this is nothing spectacular, right? Just a simple class with mutable properties. So as the next step, let's add a higher order function, which expects the function literal with a receiver as an argument. I know mambo jumbo again, so let's add it first. Let me close this window here. And right here, I'll call this function board. Fun, board, init of type board and return type unit. As a return type of the function, I would like to introduce board val board nextly let's invoke the init function board init and lastly let's return our board return board control alt l so with that done let's get back to the main function and let's see a new way to instantiate a board object so instead of creating a new object using constructor now I can use our previously implemented function. Board, open up brackets, and now we can refer simply to the title, which I can set as title one, and color, again, I can simply set that as white. Let's get rid of these two, and to make sure that this works fine, let's print out both values. Print on board, dot title control plus d to duplicate the line and we can set color formatted one line shift plus f10 to rerun the project 
and we can see that this is configured successfully. So the board function is pretty straightforward. Firstly, we create a new instance of board and then we invoke the init function on it. As I told previously, the high order function is a function which accepts another function as an argument. So we simply pass what this function should do here and we invoke it right here on this object. Lastly, we simply return the instance of board. In our main function, we do nothing else than invoking the board function. In Kotlin, when the last parameter of a function is a function, then a lambda expression passed as the corresponding argument can be placed outside of the parentheses. So, of course, we could do it this way, just like a standard function, but in Kotlin we don't have to do that, and that's the reason behind curly brackets in this place. Good, so at this point it starts looking like a DSL, right? But is it worth spending our time on implementing something like that instead of simply creating the object using the constructor and setting the values? Well, this was an easy example and life is not always so easy. So whenever we more need hierarchy in our classes, then this effort will pay off. So let me show you that by example. Let's add a new class called task, which will be put inside the board. So let me scroll up a bit. I'll close this one. Right here, I would like to add task class task. This one similarly will have two fields, title of type string and the description. var title string value and var description of string type 2. Nextly, let's add a mutable list of tasks to our board class. So var tasks mutable list of type task equals mutable list of control alt l to format the class excellent so let's see how it would look like when we would implement that using constructor let's get rid of this one well task one equals task now task one title task one similarly let's set the description and i'll call it description description one let me copy this and we'll introduce task two two task let's update the title and the description and let's update the object which we are updating in this place excellent nextly we must introduce some mutable list val tasks equals mutable list of and let's pass our two instances task one task two and finally we can introduce the board so val board equals board let's set the title title one nextly let's set the color this time we can go with white too and lastly we can set tasks board tasks equals our tasks list excellent so right now when we look at the main function it's pretty hard to see the hierarchy of objects at first glance right so instead of that let's make a necessary change let's add a function inside board and see how it will change when we'll start using kotlin type self builder approach so let's navigate to the board hit enter and now let's add the task function fun task again init this one should take task return unit as a return type we don't need to specify anything because this one will simply add tasks to the tasks list so let's open up brackets firstly let's instantiate new object of task type val task equals task nextly let's run the init function on it task init and lastly let's add this task to the list tasks add and let's add our task so following let's make use of that let's get back to the main function let's get rid of everything and let's introduce a new board val board equals remember you need to invoke the board function introduced previously then we can set title and color for example title 
which will be board one color this time let's make it green with that done let's add two tasks task to invoke the task function and inside it i can set up the task so title of the task i would like it to be task one description will be task one description huh. as usual description this time i noted that correctly let me copy this paste it right here and we can add another task wonderful so with this solution we can clearly see what is the hierarchy in our classes right we can see that we create a board and we have some title color and task inside it when we implement our lambda inside the main function we can access the task function just like we access the title or color property of the board object to better visualize it let's use the explicit this right here so you can see right here this dot title similarly color task and here to rephrase the object for which we invoke the function is a receiver and it implicitly becomes this inside the function so our board function first creates a new object and then invokes pass lambda on it which sets the title color and invokes the task method twice on the other hand the task function also creates a new plain object and also invokes pass lambda on it this time setting the title and description and lastly adds this task to the list of tasks inside the board and basically at this point we've just created our first simple kotlin type safe builder as a homework i highly encourage you to introduce the attachment class which you will later put inside the task class as a list just like we did inside the board and that's all for this video in which we learned not only how to implement our own dsl but also all the necessary features which allow us to do that in the upcoming weeks i'll upload a video about scope control and how the dsl marker annotation can help us when building our own dsls so right now hit subscribe and don't miss any important updates see you in the future bye